welcome back, listeners. Wow, La Liga delivers again, doesn't it? Yeah, it was a really great weekend. A weekend of lots of great goals, lots of great games. And it's not over yet. Assassinal Maria is happening tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but judging by that, maybe end zero zero just to balance things out. <laughs> no, no, let's have faith. I'm pretty sure too. I mean, Almeria might not win because as soon as I'm pretty good away from him, and Almeria don't have a striker anymore. So. Yeah, the striker Sadiq, who got injured in the Real Sociedad game. But let's start off in the city of Seville because I feel that's where all the storylines are for this week. Mm-hmm. The big game was Betis Villarreal, and Sevilla is the main attraction in terms of storylines for La Liga at the moment. But let's start mm-hmm. with Betis Villarreal because that it felt like a final. We had the atmosphere of final in the first half, yeah. very tense, mm-hmm. lots of chances. But in the second half, when Betis came to life, they got the goal, and the reaction at the end, it felt like they just like secured the fourth spot or exactly. Won. Because when you look at it, it was only midway through this game and I realized that this is a really, really important game because these are the two teams in many people's eyes that are, besides Atleti, top of, like the main top four contenders. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a, yeah, so it was very important for Real Betis to finally beat Villarreal for Pegri, to finally beat his whole team. Yeah. And yeah, the way he celebrated just showed you like it really felt like this was a fine out. Yeah, it was. And and if you look at it from Betis' perspective, they go into this game, they lost for me during the Europa League. Mm-hmm. They go into this game without Fakir. Luis Enrique comes into the game, he steps up, he provides a beautiful cross for Rodri to score the winner. Mm-hmm. And it, it was just that a lot of players who were so-called fringe players really stepped up. And that's something we saw a lot of this weekend. Yeah, exactly. On Luis Enrique, right? Me and someone else on Twitter were kind of like discussing that we're not really impressed with what he's seen from him so far. But he shut us up with that beautiful delivery. And like you said, Rodri was there on hand to score his first goal since around this time last year. Yeah. And for Villarreal, this is the first time they've conceded a goal all season. So yeah. would, you, would you possibly be on the La Liga's goal considered chart? <laughs> he wasn't there before. Yeah, he's, uh, not, he's there now. <laughs> he's there now. Yeah. But it, it, it was a pretty, it was bad luck for Villarreal because they lose Gerard in, mm-hmm. I believe, in the first or second half. And second. Start, in the second half. And they start the game really well, actually. They have like two or three really good opportunities. Mm-hmm. I was impressed by Jackson again. His work rates is mm-hmm. fantastic. And the way mm-hmm. he passed down. The best defenders, but Emery in coming to this game felt like, okay, we're going to break barriers this season. We're going to do something else. Is this a step back for them? Uh, I don't know if we can call this game one of those days or like a bad performance. Because when you look at it, Villarreal made six big chances in the yeah. game. They didn't take any of them because or either Rui Silva was excellent or bad decision making. I feel like Villarreal, they were careless with some of their final touches and everything, the final third. And that's what caused them to do. Otherwise, I thought they were pretty good. Yeah. And the injury, the injury of Gerard, right? Now mm-hmm. that they they've lost Gerard, they've lost Dijuma. They're in trouble up front because like, if they're not finishing up chances, the best striker is in the available. Mm-hmm. It might make things difficult if they are to finish in the top four. Yeah, and we'll have to see how bad Jared's injury is. It looks like they wrapped out of ice around his hamstring, so hopefully it's not too serious. Luis Enrique will also be hoping it's not too serious because internationals are around the corner. So I, I feel even if he doesn't go for the international break, it's pretty... It's at least a bit... It makes Lyra feel a bit better. He's getting injured when there's going to be like a two-week break. So sure. that's what adds his recovery time. In the short term, how they handle it well. I mean, Alex Baena has been scoring goals this season. He scored a brace in the conference league, so maybe he can step up. Morales is there. Coquilan has become a goal scorer recently. <laughs> so yeah, I feel 
they have the team has enough quality to manage without Jared. And I don't know when Dandrina comes back, but like you said, if two of them are out at the same time for a pretty long time, then that's bad. A player on the better side I want to highlight is Luis Felipe. And I felt I was very impressed with him at the front of Val. And I was mm. also very impressed with him here. He just takes Betis' defense to another level. He's such an upgrade over Bartra. Yeah, it's a, yeah, he seems more reliable than Bartra. And he, yeah, like you said, against Real Madrid, he was really good today. He was really, really good. Um, Alex Moreno was also excellent today. The only person that was really letting the defense down was Petzela, because every <laughs> a lot of the big chances Villarreal had, he was the architect. Because, like you yeah. said, Nicholas Jackson was just hosting this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess it's, it's good for Betis to step in the right direction. They're finally mm-hmm. get, getting this big results for Villarreal. They have a chance to play another team from the city of Seville next weekend when they play Sevilla. And Sevilla, they ended their long run, their long wait for when they finally beat Espanyol. It looked that like it was going to be comfortable, but boy, did they suffer at the end. Yeah, I will say though. I haven't watched the game. They were trending up, and I didn't understand how they were trending up because they weren't they weren't that good on the day. <laughs> it was a more even game. I was like, Espanol do not deserve to be losing Trinil before halftime. And at least the scoreline kind of reflected the overall performance of both teams at the end of the day. But yeah, Sevilla got a really, really unlikely hero to build them out on Saturday. <laughs> Lamela or Carmona? Uh, Carmona. Lamela was a pantomime villain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lamela scored, but then he went and made a pretty difficult task even more difficult by getting sent off. <laughs> yeah. yeah let's talk about Carmona because he's been the one bright spark in their season so far. He's coming to the team. I believe he's a right back that he can play. He's a center back. Right? I, I'm, I'm not too sure either. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but like in this game, he played as a right back and mm-hmm. he looked really decent. Like he put in lots of good crosses, provided the first assist for Lamela's goal. He yeah. scored a brace. Mm-hmm. It's, he deserves a spot in starting 11, given. How yeah, g- given how um, Montiel and Navas have started, he deserves a spot either at center back or right back. It's pretty much anybody's. <laughs> I'm at center back definitely deserves a start because the other options there are trash to, yeah. to be honest. But yeah. But yeah, it was great for him to yeah. get two goals. And in this game, Sevilla, they were the architects of your own downfall in a way, because like you you, you already mentioned Lamella with a pretty reckless challenge about the right card, <laughs> but even in the anatomy on how it got so tight, mm-hmm. a, a handball for the goal, which maybe it's a bit harsh on Acuna. Yeah, I feel Bono should have done a lot better for, for this second goal. Yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't think he had a great game. Yeah, yeah Bono definitely should have done better for a second one. Also, like they did, Sevilla were just inviting pressure from Espanyol by not keeping the ball well. You know, Isco, Rakitic did, a uh, Rakitic came on and helped everybody, but Isco, um, Oliver, Jordan, they didn't really do that well in the second half, and that led to, um, Espanyol really ramping the pressure on them. But thankfully, first, Lopetegui, he's finally gotten a big win. Yeah. Which, which he really needed. Yeah, especially after what happened in the Champions League or um, against Barcelona in Champions League. Like, it was utter, like, panting, pandemonium. Yeah. The ex-president was calling for the current president to go out. Born yeah. Brian. It, it seemed like a team that's on in crisis. Emotionally. Yeah. yeah. And they just really needed this. Yeah. But I'll say if I'm someone who's arguing from, let's say, the other side, let's say I'm anti Lopetegui, I'm like, okay, does this really solve our problem? Because we stay with this guy for longer rather than refresh. True, true, true. There's that, there is that problem. But I'm not a fan of sacking him so soon after the transfer window ends because to be fair to him, an attacker that he could probably do it in Yanis has isn't available yet. Yeah. He's one of the center backs he bought has been injured. That's hardly his fault. So uh, we'll have to see. Next week against Villarreal is a really important game for them. Also, I believe they play Copenhagen this week yeah. too. 
these two games are must wins. Which one's the more important one? I, I can't really say. I mean, getting back on track in the league is important and trying to get Champions League again, but the likelihood that Man City are going to beat Dortmund is pretty high. So it's best to take advantage of that as much as possible. And then if you can con- if you can start building good momentum now, by the time you face Dortmund, we might be having a completely different conversation about a completely different severe team, like a severe team that's like confident now. So yeah. the next game against Copenhagen is the most important. And by the time they play Dortmund, Lopetegui will be hoping that Macau is fit, Yanis mm-hmm. is well integrated into the team, mm-hmm. Goldberg as well. So it might get, there might be a different feeling. Yeah. But I, I'll, I'll worry for him because I'm scared that if they play Villarreal and they do lose, and I do see Villarreal beating them, mm-hmm. that maybe he, it's international break, let's sack him. Yeah, there's also that. Um, well, him losing the Villarreal game and getting sacked, that's probably the most ideal time to sack him, in all honesty. Because if you keep, let's say, like you said, if this is not sustainable and we're just prolonging the torture for all parties, you know, it's best to cut him loose after the international break, should they, before the international break, should they lose, and then have the new manager, whoever that is, try and get an idea of things during the two weeks. Two weeks, and yeah. you're super spotted on that. Mm-hmm. Like, right, let's move on from a manager who is more stable in his job, Carlo Ancelotti, no Benzema, no major issues against Mallorca, although they did score most of the goals late on. Mm-hmm. Eden Hazard didn't really um, impress, did he? Uh, yeah, it was. The thing is, if you compare Hazard to Rodrigo and Vinicius, how Rodrigo and Vinicius scored their goals, that ability to get out of tight spaces was what created their goals, Yeah. right? Hazard doesn't have that anymore. Yeah. Hazard can connect with people, like drop off, make some flip-ons, but that change of pace isn't there anymore. And I honestly don't think it's ever going to come back. So, yeah, it's... I feel Rodrigo down the middle and Valverde on the wing is a much better system to replace Benzema. I know it didn't work in the classical last season, but it's better than having Hazard there. Yeah. Yeah, but but also in the class five, I believe he started with Modric as like the oh, most, uh, oh yeah, true. Yeah. That that weird Modric and Chris front press. Yeah, I always felt he could have played Rodrigo because even in this game, it felt like at, at certain points when Rodrigo was on, and I believe Valverde, Valverde came on, Modric came on. It felt like they were playing a four four two in a way, and the way Rodrigo and Vinicius combined was mm-hmm. like really electric, and that could be a front two mm-hmm. that. Helps Roma good when Benzema is not there. Yeah. And yeah, like we talked about Rodrigo, um, his last two games and this one, he's really contributed a lot to Real Madrid winning. So this season could be an important season where maybe should age catch up with Benzema or injuries, like Rodrigo really takes that next step and assists Vinny in carrying Real Madrid to great things. Yeah. And let's not forget about Verde. He scored an excellent goal. Like all the yeah. shots that he took last season that hit the bar. Finally <laughs> paid off in one great solo goal. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Rudiger also got his first goal for Real Madrid. I, I want to point out Mallorca. Like, they they, they impressed for 70-odd minutes. They defended yeah. well. They did their thing. Kendi yeah. and Mariki. Linked up yet again. And, yeah. So, if, if they actually stay up, this pair is, like, the winning yeah. pair. I will say one more thing about, you know, Real Madrid, though. Yeah. Remember that Antonio Sanchez had that big chance? <laughs> oh, <on>. yeah. <laughs> you know, once I saw that, I tweeted, they've missed their chance now. Three <laughs> more goals for Real Madrid incoming. And I was bloody right again. Because here's the thing. Real Madrid this season, in first halves, they are winning games in first halves like 8-5. Yeah. In second halves, it's like 14-0. Wow. <laughs> These guys really wear you down and the inevitability around the Real Madrid winner increases with every week and against every opponent they play. Yeah, and and thing is, the thing about this Madrid team is like, you always feel they're a team that they might not always play brilliantly, but mm-hmm. they know how to beat the opponents in front of them. 
they know yeah. how to solve problems. They're good yeah. at problem team. Like mm -hmm. if, if you compare them to like a Barcelona who would like amaze and play this brilliant style and like maybe win by the same scoreline, but Real Madrid, they just solve problems. They solve, they know what level they need to do to win yeah. a particular game. And that's why they're so good. Yeah. And to be fair to Real Madrid, they scored just as many goals as Barca have. It's just that strangely enough, they've not kept a clean sheet in the league this season. Yeah, or, or maybe on the flip side, it's strange enough, Barcelona <laughs> can see this. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. Uh, it, 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 they considered two goals, but it's the Madrid Derby, so may, next week, so maybe things might change. Atletico, they also look very good in the game against Salta Vigo, but I also say Salta looked, Salta looked very good too. It's, it, exactly. It, Salta haven't had a bad game this yeah. year. Yes, I know they got hammered in the scoreline against both big Madrid teams, but they didn't play bad. Honestly, they could have, if I have been 3-1 to Celta in the first half, with yeah. a little bit of luck going to Celta's side. Yeah, Gilbert, Gilbert, who came in for Oblak, made some <laughs> really big saves. He made some really yeah. good saves. The goal they eventually, that Vega eventually put past him. And that was one I was like, you could have done better, <laughs> yeah. but he, was, he, he kept the score, he kept Atleti alive before Korea scored, and that's the team with Atleti, right? This season, they're just so clinical. Yeah. They had four shots on target, four goals. One of the goals was an angle, but my point still stands. Yeah. Once, it, once it's on target this season, they're normally putting it in. Sure. But I feel in this game, what what held the key was Rodrigo de Paul and Condovia because mm -hmm. the defense wasn't the most reliable when you saw it. So, <laughs> captain Hermoso behind. <laughs> I saw Hermoso the captain's armband after he was boot hero and really known. Wednesday, on Wednesday, I was like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like they want to like replicate Maguire and. <laughs> yeah, uh, like Strand Larson really bullied this guy. <laughs> Yeah, he did. But Rodrigo de Paul, though, he had, he had such an amazing game. Like, yeah. It's, everything that he does with Argentina, I feel in this game, he did over Atleti. Exactly. The driving runs into a box. He took his goal really, really well. It was deflected, but still was really good. The overall performance and partnership with Condogbia in midfield was the strongest part of Atleti in this game. And that's what they built on, not the defense. Yeah. Which is which is surprising, and that, that that's what's going to make this derby against Madrid so enticing. Unlike other derbies, when it was like Zidane Simeone and it was a binary scoreline, I do feel there'll be goals in this. I'm not sure where it goes, but I do fancy Rodrigo and Vinicius against. Right. So the toy. I, I the fancy game. I fancy Vinicius against anybody these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with four goals like, so far, like the, the season. Ooh. Yeah. Is Vinicius Jr. world class? I'll, I'll say he's world class. I'll say he's I, I agree. Definitely agree. At, that level. He's at, definitely that, at that at this level point, where, yeah, because he's become a reliable player. He scores in big games. Mm -hmm. He scores spectacular goals. He's smarter in his decision making. So mm -hmm. I'll say at this point, he's at that level for his age group. Mm -hmm. Maybe for yeah. all the players in the world, he's definitely a very top player. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah, the Madrid derby next week should be pretty interesting. Yeah. Both of them have, eh, they have slightly challenging games in the UCL, so we'll see how they rotate and everything. Yeah, I, I know something about the UCL. It's honest to give us a in all the groups. <laughs> yeah, Atleti, you remember that playing Leipzig this week, right? Yeah, Atleti yeah. playing Leverkusen. And, and we're playing and against... <laughs> yeah, <Mark. laughs> everyone has a Buddhist league at me. Yeah, so we have, have Dortmund. Dortmund. Yeah. Yeah. But if Bartos, I couldn't be more obvious, could you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah Holland going back, Holland playing his former team and Lewandowski playing his former team in the same week. Come on. They could, these guys don't have sense. You, you could have put them, put them a week apart. Let's. Yeah. Oh my God, do you ever. Yeah. Don't let me do your job for you. <laughs> Yeah, but but on Barca though, they had a fairly comfortable win against Cadiz. Finally beat beat Cadiz. They finally beat Cadiz, but <laughs> to be honest, that was not the important thing that happened no, during the no. game. So I can't even brag about it. 
No, it wasn't. But it, it, it was sad to see what happened. Mm-hmm. But also, given the way the players, the fans, both sides reacted, mm-hmm. it, was, it, was a, it was something, it was a human spectacle, I would say. Yeah. Given yeah. how Barca threw the, the deliberators to Ledesma, Ledesma, Ledesma trades. Jose Mari uh, carrying the um, stretcher into the crowd for the person. So yeah, I hope the two people are okay. And I heard, last I heard, they were pretty okay. So hopefully they can improve on their health. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, it sort of makes it hard to talk about football. So mm-hmm. let's just keep it at Barca B. Cadet. Cadet, they're still in trouble. No wins. And El Sakiko <laughs> next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yes, yes, yes. It's uh, kind of versus by the league. Oh, wow. I, I feel sorry for Sergio, but at the same time, because I feel like Lopetegui, the mm-hmm. planning hasn't been great for mm. a rather of them. It's like this, did for a long time in the window, they didn't make any significant improvement on the, on the squad. And then they just made a lot of Interesting signings later in the window, but those signings have not really gelled yet. So, um, yeah, Sergio is in trouble. No, they've not really gelled, but on the flip side, Barcelona, Xabi just equaled um, Zidane's um, record away win. Barcelona looked brilliant against Pilsen. They look, they, they've looked brilliant in almost all, all their games. But, Except for Bloody Ryan. Yeah, but I'll, I'll, say, I'll say one thing, though, and you, you might... Think oppositely because you really love Barca, but I, I'll say they got the teams, they got the teams at the right possible time. Like they got by the lead, which is possibly the worst team in the league. Uh, Sevilla in crisis, Cadet. Who? Mm, to, if, you, if you want to be super cynical, we can say that <laughs> honestly. We can also, I mean, we can also say that. But I'm actually I agree with you, but in a different way. I agree that this team is a team that's still learning the about themselves. Yeah. Xavi is a young manager who is not perfect and has made a couple of questionable decisions this season that I've been like, what are you doing? An experienced coach will not make that. But yeah, this is still a team in transition. And while we're having tremendous results now, there's going to be yeah, little beeps and where that means more going to score for in every game. So <laughs> that, that's what I mean. I, I don't know. It's like like it's for example, Barca have Elche next next week, which is and, which is and then we have Celta. crisis. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so, I mean, Celta are going to be Celta not only a difficult yes. team for us, but at home. Yeah. Well, we'll see. It, well, Bayern on Tuesday is going on to Tuesday, be. Yeah, that, that's going to be the test, and that's what that's what I was going for. Because I'll say the biggest, the most impressive performance for Barca this season was Rosa Ciudad, because like they were in good form. They mm-hmm. played Barca and they gave Barca a really good test. Mm-hmm. But since then, I'll say the teams they played have either been in crisis or, frankly, they haven't been that good. Mm-hmm. But Bayern will be the one that will yeah. test Barcelona. Yeah. And my as a Barca fan, my expectation from this game is just one team. Do not lose by more than two goals. <laughs> <laughs> if you're losing 2-0 and Bayern just beats you and you're like, okay, that's fine. You tried do not capitulate. Do not give up. <laughs> do not throw in the towel. Anything else is a bonus for me because, okay, okay, let me be a bit more positive. At least draw. And the way point at, at the big team is pretty good. If we can win, that's absolutely brilliant. I'll take it. But the, I think the most realistic result and what I predict is a score draw. I, I think different set. I think Barca, they should they should win this game or not should win this game. But it, everything is set up for them to win because they're playing a Bayern who haven't been on form. They're playing mm-hmm. a Bayern who they've struggled domestically. Mm-hmm. I think Barca have looked really good. The players look good compared to the last times they played each other. So yeah. I But there's another that. thing. Yeah. You've noticed that Barca are the only La Liga team not to tr- go behind at any point this season. Yeah. After Villarreal, let's say we go behind early. What would the response be? That should that would be very critical in determining what kind of team we are. Because we look at Real Madrid when they're in adversity and how they respond. That's that tells you everything to know about them. So we need to be like that. 
that's if we're going behind. But if Ter Stegen keeps everything calm, then that's <laughs> good too. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying like Bayern can pose a lot of questions that, like you said, we haven't been asked so far this season. And given how reactionary football fans are, either way this game goes, there'll be reactions soon. <laughs> Yeah, especially with Lewandowski going back and everything. Yeah. Um, but to be fair to Bayern, like they haven't been great domestically, but they have looked they did look very good against Inter Milan. So mm-hmm. we'll, we'll see that. We'll see that when it come when it happens. An interesting game so far. But yeah. going back to La Liga, talking about capitulation, Elche really capitulated <laughs> against Atlético. Yeah. Exactly. You know we're talking about Osakiku and how Pacheta Pacheta less so since we last talked. Because River did one on Monday. Yeah. But yeah, Francisco is looking in trouble now. Especially given the fact that it's a centenary year for Alpshe. And mm-hmm. how how do you defend being 4 0 down at against, home, at against Athletic? Yeah, kind of. What's, what's even point. more insulting is the fact that it took them being 4 0 for them to actually play. Because yeah. in the second half, I thought they played as well as Athletic. But maybe you can say Athletic took their foot off the cast. Like we won the game, but still to to only to start showing hunger when you're falling you down. If I'm a fan, I feel slightly insulted by that. So it's that. And the fact that almost every team that has played against LG this season has absolutely slapped them. It's it's worn very worn for Francisco. But on the flip side for Athletic, it's good that they're scoring again. They can't they can't seem to score at San Mamez, but yeah, exactly. Away from <laughs> I, I noticed it's them like their two away games have seen them score for eight times. Yeah. But at home, their results are mixed. They drew against Mallorca, even though they probably could have well in all three home games, they created enough chances to win by more by at least one or two, but you know, athletic sometimes. Yeah, and, and Valverde made the point and his pressure that like they're the team that takes possibly the most shots in the league. Mm-hmm. They reach the area the most in the league. So it's offensively, they're doing okay, but it's just a matter of like having the patience to finish things off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, one guy who did have the patience for his very first La Liga goal was Nico Williams, and he exactly. took it really well. He looked like yeah. a bad game on. Yeah, and he was involved in the penalty that they won, and he forced the own goal for the opener. So... Someone like Nico Williams, for example, if he keeps improving, he's going, he's going to make the attack better. Berenguer, if he keeps his consistency, Munayin is always Munayin. Inaki, Inaki can keep doing what Inaki does. But, you know, a little bit more precise finishing won't, would go so far to help Athletic. It's okay. <laughs> Very well. Oh, um, but at least they're not suffering like Ross Sociedad, who lost to Katafe. Finally, Hatafi get the, get a win. Your man and his now better than Hatafi. Messi and Ronaldo put together. <laughs> <laughs> at this moment, yeah. Now, well, let's leave Messi out of it at this moment, <laughs> but Ronaldo definitely. <laughs> yeah, what a free kick! And the Hatafi went on, on for no strength. Strength. Elenia gets in the goal, mm-hmm. then Bryce almost sort of cut it back. Do you think this was a case of Real Sociedad after that emotional win against Manchester United? coming to Atafi and not being able to put up the same performance. Yeah, um, yeah. Real Sociedad had made quite a few ch- changes to their team that beat my United. I think the way Sorlot and Sadiq play, it's better to have only one of them on the pitch unless you're like trailing. I feel like if a, a pure striker and a like pseudo striker is the best combination for them as against two big number nines. Yeah. Another thing is that Real Sociedad's record after European games is generally poor. So there's that. Yeah, and and and, and something about them is that I've always felt is that I just don't feel they have the squad large enough to compete for Europe. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, but again, it's good win against United. So I think they will take that and they're like, yes, we can still get through our group. So. Mm-hmm. It's not all bad news for Real Sociedad. Yeah. It's even better news for Girona, who got another win. Renier getting on the score sheet. I believe this is his first goal in La Liga. 
yeah. went through with an absolute belter to bring one back to Valladolid, but Oriol Romeu on his first game, I believe, for Girona, got the winner. So, I think his first game back at Montlivi. Montlivi, yes. At, uh, at Montlivi, at least. Yeah, I got the winner, which was is which is pretty important for Girona because they won two out of their three home games and for a newly promoted team having a strong home form is pretty important if you want to stay up also i believe Rainer jesus is the youngest goal scorer in Girona's history wow if i'm not mistaken the next kaka apparently yeah but, but and, he, did, he did take his goal well, very well yeah yeah, it was a really good goal. It was a really good assist by Alex Garcia as well. And for the lead in El Sakigo against Cadiz, like, do we have faith in them to pull up a result and end things for Sergio, or will it be the other way around and there are questions about Pacheta? Yeah. I believe, though, that while River, River did at least have a win and a draw, and Weisman is, Weisman is just coming back and he already scored one. So if he's fit enough to start against Cardiff next Monday, then I can only see one win. Interesting. We'll, we'll have to wait and see Weisman destroying Sergio's career. <laughs> <laughs> the man who brought into La Liga, <laughs> he, he yeah. puts him out of a job. That would just be... Yeah, finally, I didn't want to talk about this. That's why I put it last Rio versus Valencia. And Boy, boy, boy. <laughs> I was wondering, I was like, wait, there's something to see me. We now talk about the Friday games or what they last. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and Valencia's verbal did, did burst. It, it wasn't a very good team. Yeah. Rio were brilliant. And I'm surprised. I'm surprised when I saw the stat. They hadn't won at Vallecas this, this year. year. <laughs> and this was their first win. And they haven't won at Vallecas in the. I think they may have won a game in the Cup. Because they got the semi-final, but in the league for sure, this is their first win at home. Uh, which is good for Ryu. And Ryu have actually started the season pretty decently. Isi Palazon has started the season pretty well. Valencia, they are better at home, but then away from home. You know. Yeah, because I've seen better performances from Valencia, but this was just like Ryu just outwork Valencia, they outpass Valencia. They just felt like they had more to them than Valencia did, which was somewhat scary. But yeah. saying that, like there were some chances that Valencia had that the one that Nico had before he scored the yeah. own goal. Yeah, that was <laughs> that, that was unfortunate for me too. Yeah. I think it's like with Valencia, it's like Valencia January this season, the trend besides the Atafe game where they absolutely were amazing. The trend has been they've created They've made they've done good things, they just haven't had the quality all the time to make those good things go. So maybe you think someone like Avani when he's ready, and I don't know when he's going to be ready, would improve some of that, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see that. And for Rayo, next up is going to San Mamas play Athletic Club, Valverde versus Irario, let's see if student. That would be something interesting for next yeah. week. And, and, and then Rayo beats them last year away from home so yeah we'll see if athletic club can put in a really strong home performance as they do away from him true true now let's go to europe and let's see let's just go through things that have happened uh no premier league this week because of what happened with the queen uh but there was do you think this is good or bad news for english teams going into the champions league because i think this gives them a bit of freshness compared to the rest of the competitors. Yeah, it gives them fresh as well. At the same time, you lose a bit of match sharpness. So it depends. It just depends on which one you value more. And I feel some teams needed a weekend off after their displays in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool. <laughs> cough, cough. Yeah, KK absolutely destroyed them. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah. Napoli were on fire. Joe Simeone even got a goal. Like, and you know he had the Champions League uh, tattooed on his yeah. arm because he wanted to play in it, and he scores in his first game. That, yeah. that's, and that's kisses the arm, band. and kisses yeah. the arm tattoo like he said he would when he was 13. So that was beautiful to see, and that came 
I believe days after Giuliano Simeone scored. Yeah. For Real Zaragoza. And he also scored with Doblete today for Real Zaragoza to get them the Beautiful. first win in yeah, La Liga Smart Pack. So good, good Sim- time for the Simeone family. Indeed. And Napoli are also top of Syria. So again, they're in a really good moment. They've started the season well. And hopefully they can finish what they started for once. <laughs> <laughs> and next up for Napoli is Rangers. Do you feel like they'll be scared off by the intense atmosphere in Ibrox? Um, I think they'll destroy Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, I'm Celtic. Celtic Park also has a good atmosphere, but that didn't stop Real Madrid from Real Madrid in them, so. Yeah. I feel Napoli have in too much quality to be bothered by atmosphere, but Rangers, if there's any Rangers fan listening, I mean, the Rangers are not a bad team. They just came up against a really, really good Ajax. So if Napoli can play, yeah, I believe if Napoli plays to their best in any case, that the win is theirs. Yeah, and Ajax, they have Liverpool. Liverpool, they will be, like, licking your wounds from this. Yeah. And Ajax do something at Anfield. Uh, at Anfield, it's going to be more difficult, but it's, it's, it's not... Given how bad Liverpool's defending was against Napoli, and they say you're only as good as your last game, so... I don't... If Ajax were to get a positive result, it won't shock me. That's all I'll say. Yeah, me neither, me neither. And let's talk about the German teams for a bit. Like we always said, there was this La Liga versus Bundesliga we're going to see next and during the week. Uh, Bayern, they dropped points again. But Dortmund also, they massively lost to Leipzig 3-0. Marco Rosa going back to... Marco Rosa joining Leipzig after Domenico Tedesco sacked because mm-hmm. Shakhtar... Destroyed. Destroyed. Uh, <laughs> that, that was a massacre. <laughs> the, the counterattacks from Shakhtar were. Yeah, and the counterattacks and um, Gulashi just absolutely funding everything. Yeah, but but now Leipzig looked renewed. Mm-hmm. They have um, Real Madrid. Should Real Madrid be worried about this? Um, is 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 the game at the Bernabeu? Uh, yeah, Red Bull. Right Leipzig, in general, their intensity and their fast transitions is something to worry about because I believe they're fast enough to give Real Madrid troubles, but ultimately, we know who's going to win this game, so <laughs> why we do it? But yeah. I believe, I'm, I mean, but the new manager belts is important, and Marco Rose has gotten a good result against Real Madrid in the past, so we'll see what happens. Yeah, and for Dortmund, this isn't a great um, rehearsal for Man City game. Yeah, um, going from getting destroyed by Schlobberg's light to <laughs> eating Haaland isn't exactly what's isn't exactly comforting. So, Especially yeah, the rest of Haaland. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but the thing is, I won't write, rule Dortmund out completely, though. Because they've been... Sometimes they've been good this year, and the other times they've been like what they were in the weekend. But so we'll see which Dortmund turns up. Yeah, and on Leverkusen, they haven't had the greatest of starts to the season. They drop points yet again. It's written in the stars they're going to beat up a team Germany, isn't it? Nah, I. It's possible. It's, it's honest. It's, it's going to happen. This <laughs> <laughs> no, Atleti. I I believe was more like his Atleti draw later on or something because Atleti. <laughs> Love making things a lot more dramatic than they should be. Oh man, the as evidenced as their last Champions League game. Yeah, it's it's like the, the first 90 minutes, nothing happened, nothing mm-hmm. at all. A- apart from him, also like almost killing a Porto player. I'm surprised, he didn't <laughs> that <a> <laughs> <laughs> but he gets to go, concedes a penalty, and then you think it's over, right? Then Griezmann scores in the 101 minute, it's the most athletic thing possible. <laughs> Exactly. That the last eleven minutes of that game. If you want, if you're new to Atleti and you want to find out how they are, just watch that last minute. Those last <laughs> eleven minutes. But yeah, but in all seriousness, I believe that given the fact that Atleti have just beaten a pretty good Celta four one, they should be confident and you know 
anything other than a win against um, Bayer Leverkusen would be snatched a disappointment, given the form of the two teams. Sure, sure, sure. And, and in Bundesliga, they're surprise leaders. They're Union Berlin and Freiburg. Did you, did you see this coming? Six games into the season, I think. Um, Freiburg, I could see. You, you could see it, given how that they were really good last season and yeah. almost got top four. So it's good to see them continuing that. But Union Berlin, no, I didn't see that coming. No. Let's, let's move on to Italy, shall we? Because like a lot of Serie A teams, they won by the minimum. Inter winning 1-0. They have to beat Victor Rosen. They have to this, this, this week. Yes. Given the fact that the, cha- the history between Bayern and Barcelona does not favor us, <laughs> this is a golden opportunity because if you don't beat Victoria Pilsen and Barcelona gets something from Bayern, you have to play Barcelona two times in a row. And Bayern have to play Victoria Pilsen two times in a row. And there's no way Bayern aren't going to get at least one win from Victoria Pilsen. But so if you're Inter, this game is massively important. Yeah, and for Bayern, let's talk about them a bit because, like, they're they're playing Barcelona. From their point of view, if they can, if they beat Barcelona, this that's the group effectively wrapped up, isn't it? Yeah, if they beat Barcelona, then I believe that means they're getting out of the group. Not that we anyone had any words about them getting out of the group, but if they if they let's say they lose to us, which I hope they do, and Inter win. It makes things a little bit more interesting in the group of deaths. Yeah. So hopefully things are made interesting instead of predictable. Like everyone and their mother is saying we're going to lose. Yeah. <laughs> because if, if Bayern win this, then maybe they focus more their attention on the Bundesliga and huh? they rest a couple of players for Victoria Pils and and then huh? I could see them winning both of the games against Victoria Pils. And so it's 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 a layup. It's a layup. Yeah. Um Going to Juventus though in Serie A, they, they tied that was funny. <laughs> the funniest now about this game. <laughs> yeah, Juve were losing 2 0 to Sarantina. They Juve start coming back late on. Bonucci and Bremer score. Milik <laughs> scores a stoppage time winner. He's already on yellow card, takes off his shirt, <laughs> knows he's going to get sent off, but he's like, Yeah, I scored the winner. No. And wait. <laughs> VAR comes in, cancels the goal. No. Oh, you may no. get a point, and Milik still gets sent off. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I was... Oh, like, I did watch the game. I watched the highlights after, but like, I was following like what was going on. I just saw Milik scored, and then Milik was sent off immediately. So I put two and two together. I was like, he must have gotten sent off for taking off his shirt. Oh. And I look again, I see his two I'm like, wait... This guy gets set up for that. <laughs> and yeah. if they are, they're, honestly, they're what Barcelona were last season, but they still no, no, we, we are not. We are not that bad. So at least we didn't look. Okay, look at if we were to play PSG last season and PSG yeah. gave the, the strategy of giving us the ball, we would have done something with it instead of looking clueless. Because <laughs> it's like you be right, Paredes, after Paredes plays a true ball. That's it. That's where the move ends. Everyone else is like, what do we do now? <laughs> yeah, but they have, they have to improve against Benfica because in Serie A, they've been dropping points like left, right, and center. But mm-hmm. And if they play Benfica and Benfica get something from, from them, because I believe they're at home. And things yeah. would look serious for Juve in terms of getting out of the group. Yeah, and things, if Benfica gets anything out of Juve, it's going to be difficult because you're now, it's, it, may, it may not be, it's not the end of the world, but at this point in time, do we really trust Juve to beat? Where's the last team in their group again? Mac- their name Maccabi is Haifa. Do we really trust Juve to beat them? No, no, I, I can see Haifa gets in the point from Juve in Israel. That but... has a thing, so much like Barca last season, in the sense of having to play a really strong team and then Benfica, you know, it's like, you have you they have to win this game. Like Allegri came out and said before the PSG game that the game against Benfica is the most important. Is that being overly negative and looking down on yourself? Yes, but it's kind of the truth. Yeah. Especially after Juve's performances this season. So they have to win that game for sure. 
Yeah, they really have to. But for PSG, I think the game against uh, Maccabi is going to be a layup. Uh, but I want to talk to you on what, something you mentioned on social media between Hakimi and Mbappe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yes, it's it. Football Twitter, you have football Twitter or very active teams. Football yeah. Twitter normally divides PSG into two teams. Yeah. Neymar and Messi versus Mbappe and Hakimi. Why so? Hakimi seems to only remember he can cut the ball back when Mbappe is in the box. Apparently, when anyone else is in the box, Hakimi doesn't do that. So it's a, from that perspective, it's a bit strange to see Mbappe arguing with his special teammates, quote unquote. <laughs> but yeah, what that shows to me is that I'm it's just another example of why. I like Mbappe as a player, but off the pitch, he can be a bit something. I keep comparing to Haaland. Mbappe is the better player by a lot, but Haaland, Haaland off the pitch seems like some, someone you'd want to get a drink with, like a really nice guy. You, you don't see him like slandering teammates or threatening to sell teammates. <laughs> Yeah, he, he did get a drink with Joaquin and he posted something. Yeah, like, and he oh. posted, uh, yeah, exactly. For something like that, I think I did you proud, sir, <laughs> after <laughs> beating Sevilla. <laughs> that, was, that was great to see. But yeah, Mbappe, he's a great player, but the whole, you know, every time he and Neymar, every other game PSG play, I'm always hearing something like he and Neymar did this or that. I'm like, can you guys just grow up? You're both adults. Like, and you both, if you, you 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 guys realize that for PSG to win the Champions League, you have to minimize this kind of childish behavior. Yeah, I, I don't I don't think they realize that, and maybe that might be their own turn. Because even yeah. in, even in Ligue 1, they it's not like they're like pulling clear of everyone at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they might they might eventually, but like Marseille, but Marseille are doing really well now. Yeah, and, and they were impressive against Spurs and given until the, the red card. Until the red card, yeah. So. Do, do you fancy them to win against uh, our boys, Frankfurt, who really disappointed us <laughs> by getting thrashed? <laughs> yeah. Um, I fancy Marseille against Frankfurt at this moment in time because, like you said, Frankfurt have been started this season that well. Sporting absolutely destroyed them, so it would not shock me if Marseille did the same thing. Yeah, true. And what about Milan going back to Italy? Because they... They won. They came back to win this weekend. They have Dinamo Zagreb, who shouldn't be taken lightly because of what they did to Chelsea, who we get on to finally. But with Milan, what do we expect from them in this game? I think we should expect Milan to win this game, honestly, because they're ne they've played against our Red, Red Bull. They play against Zagreb. They're going to have a double header with Chelsea. So depend Chelsea may wake up. They might not wake up, but you have to take advantage of Zagreb and hope that Red Bull take advantage of Chelsea right now because it's not looking good over there. Yeah, true. And with Zagreb, like all power to them, they won mm -hmm. against Chelsea, which cost Tucho his job. Uh, Graham Potter, who's done really good things at Brighton, is going to be the new manager of Chelsea. Um, what should people know about him? Like who maybe haven't watched Brighton before? Um, yeah. what kind of style is he going to bring to this Chelsea team and do you feel he has the quality to get them out of the group first of all I'll say among the Premier League coaches Graham Potter is actually one of my favorites when he came to Brighton in 1920 he started he they left the Chris Eaton era of like you know typical rugby relegation football to playing like more progressive trying to and player from the back trying to have control of the ball. So he's a pretty progressive manager in that sense. For And Brighton have had pretty good results under him. But some of the highlights of their of his career with Brighton have been destroying my United <laughs> twice. <laughs> and yeah, I believe with better players at Chelsea, he can do good things. It's just... Will he, given how Chelsea play, managers drop like flies, how long is he going to stay there? That's that would be my worry. But yeah. I believe if he's 
give him patience and time, he can do well for Chelsea. Whether yeah. he gets patience and time is the question. That's true. And, and we all know Chelsea, like whenever a manager tries to implement that progressive style, they've never... Yeah. So it's either to go back to like the terrorism style with like Tuchel or the, the players revolt. Yeah, it's like, it's not how many players did buy and swap out Chelsea as to Chelsea in that regard. Yeah. And I have a like a statement to make about that because I feel sorry for Brighton, right? The same way I feel sorry for, I felt sorry for Leganes when Barca mm. took away Martin Berthwaite. And I feel, again, that rule that we had in La Liga with players was a bit unfair, given mm-hmm. like unfair in certain circumstances. The same way I feel taking a manager away from a smaller club. Just after the transfer league, window. I feel that's patently unfair. Like that should not be allowed to. Yeah, it's, it's it's really sucks for Brighton that this has happened. I I have no idea if they replaced him yet or who they're planning to replace him with. But this is a massive blow to their aspirations. This is yeah, and I guess and I just obsessed him because like it's another example of football where like big mm-hmm. teams that don't really need any help. Yeah, they're taking advantage of a smaller team, and that's something mm-hmm. that really irks me the wrong way. Yeah. To say the least. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe Brighton might get Pochettino in. <laughs> At Sevilla might get Pochettino if things go the way we expect them to go. But yeah. another thing, from the Chelsea point of view, I do not get sucked into kill just when the window has ended. Yeah. Especially when you oh, brought in players. For Aubameyang him. came to Chelsea because of Tuchel. Yeah. And now look, he just look at if I even saw this thing late, but I saw it where Kunde posted I almost joined them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's that about? Oh man. No way yeah. on Twitter? On Instagram, it's Instagram story. I believe I put it on my own Instagram story. That that I know I definitely shared it with my brothers so we could laugh at just <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's see how everything evolves. Yeah, let, let's see how it evolves. It's going to be another Champions League, interesting Champions League week. Possibly, hopefully, interesting La Liga week coming up. And mm-hmm. we'll be here to analyze it and break it down for you. And thanks again for listening. Thanks, Oscar, for being a partner to this podcast. And No problem. I wish all of you have a wonderful weekend enjoying football and see you all next week. And don't forget to like and subscribe.